Earlier this year, I visited my friend Peter Jackson in his cave. His world-class collection of props, costumes, and cinema artifacts that inspired him as a young filmmaker and continue to inspire him. One of Peter's favorite films, of course, is King Kong, and one of his most prized pieces in the collection is King Kong's armature, the metal articulated skeleton that Willis O'Brien used to animate King Kong to life for the 1933 film. So Peter, this, this, mm. this, is, this is a shelf that totally goes to your core, does mm -hmm. it? It does. D describe what, what we're looking at here. Well, this is, um this is, this is like a lot of stop motion things here. Mm -hmm. This is um, um, including a stop motion sculpture I started when I was um, about um, 14 years old and never actually finished it. No uh, way. But, but I, that's something I was, <laughs> I was sculpting when I was some monsters I was trying to make, when I, well, original monsters anyway. So this is a stop motion shelf, but the, of all the stop motion things, this is the um, thing that I would cherish the most. If there was, if there was a classic you know, story of what you would you save if there was a fire. Right, right, this yes. Is the what thing, would you run out of this This is with? the thing I would probably, I would, well, well, certainly grab. This is, because this is the original King Kong. This is King Kong 1933, <sighs> the original armature. This is the... Now, there was only two of them made. The other one is actually with Bob Burns. Yeah. And he has the other King Kong armature. Now, we, and, I, and, I've, and I've taken this to Bob's house and we photographed the two armatures together and looked at them. His one is a lot more... Um, a lot more neatly machined than mine, mm -hmm. and and so I, I we we surmise that this is Longface, which is the prototype because they, what they, they they made one Kong they did a test to sell it to the studio. Oh, okay. So um um they they, they shot Willis O'Brien, um shot some test footage and and what he shot was the stuff that's in the movie. He shot um the Tyrannosaurus Rex fight, right? Where Kong fights a T Rex. Oh, he, so his camera test made it in. Yeah, because they were like stop motion and they and they, and they but but they were done as tests to convince this. RKO to finance this very expensive film, so they, he did the he used long face for the um, scene where he shakes the the guys oh, the off, log, off the right. log, and a couple of others. And then when they did the the, the when the when the film got financed, they then um, made a second one, so another set of animators could could work on it, and that's called Round Face. <laughs> and the, the round face, which, which which we think is the Bob Burns armature, is a lot m m well well More machined because this is yeah. a, a pr so we just thought well, this makes sense if it's a prototype if it's the one that they, they haven't even got their funding for the movie yet so they're just kind of doing what they need to do to make it work. So here's yeah. the thing that blows my mind about this: looking at it as almost yeah. a prototype of a, an entirely new art form. Yes, is I, I've worked on stop motion films, yep. friends that worked on Nightmare Before Christmas. Sure. Um, the stop motion armatures are still being made exactly this way, yeah. with pressure plates against ball bearings with yep. high sensitivity so that the animators have the right amount of resistance. They can hold themselves up. And they can tighten them if they need to. They, they can get a, they, yep. they can get a, 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 um, a um, screwdriver or an Allen key. Or and a screw, got in this case, a, screw, a screwdriver. Threaded and, feet um, so they yep. can lock them into the... Yep. And so Willis O'Brien in one fell swoop invented, invents a technology that no one's been able to improve upon, really. No. I mean, these, that, the no. machining in here, that is incredibly <laughs> no, it's sensitive, incredibly sensitive, beautiful work. Oh, it's unbelievable, isn't it? It really it, is. It's unbelievable. It's all getting a bit loose now because, because what they would have done is had, is had this incredibly tight. Because it's like with, with stop motion and something that weighs, because he weighs quite a lot. This is, yeah, so you, you're And you're screwing him to the baseboard by, by his feet. And so you're going to have to have these ankle joints and knee joints as tight as anything, right, so tight. Right, right. So when, so if you, so if you're trying to animate him moving his leg, you're going to be, you're going to be pulling so hard to move it just one fr to move it that one frame. It's, it's just a, and, because yeah. you can't. You, these cannot be loose in the tight. Otherwise, he's just going to. Yeah. He's going to be top heavy. He'll go crashing to the ground. It's, and you can see it when he's climbing the building. You can yeah, see the, the fur, fur flashing yep, from yep. the animator's handling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, they could loosen them up a little bit as they got nearer the top, you know, without 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 the, without the need to hold up weight. But it yeah. was the um, these these bottom joints here must have been phenomenally tight when they were, when they were animating poor and guys. The, and the head is cast aluminum. Yeah. Um, does, do you think this is this modeling is to help it hold on to whatever went over it, whatever the you cut the holes? The yeah, like when he covers it with yeah, the skin the, the and skin, fur. Yeah, yeah, and you can see here they. Um, can see here where there, there was these these little screws because mm -hmm. there would have been a, a wire, which was his, his lip. Oh, so right. so this so you can sort of see it snapped off at some point in the past. It's um, it would have had a little a little lip thing that they could have actually they bent by hand. It's sort of wire that they could bend to make him snarl. Would have been across there. 
And so there's a... So when, when you look at Kong fighting the Tyrannosaurus, when you look at them shaking the guys off the log, um, this is the one that you're seeing. That's, that's an yeah. amazing bit of history. And, oh, yeah. and I mean, did, you couldn't have imagined when you first saw that that this would be well, we under no, your nobody care. knew that the, the two of them had survived. I mean, Bob Burns for for years and years and years because I've known Bob for twenty five years and I've always gone to his house. I've always <laughs> held his King Kong, <laughs> the amazing thing, and it was like. And then suddenly in London, this thing shows up about um, about seven or eight years ago, and um, it shows up, and nobody, nobody, none of no, none of the, the sort of the fans anywhere around, you know, the, the sort of the enthusiasts knew that the second one had survived. You know, and no one knew that it's, I don't even know where it came from. Wow. And, uh, but it's definitely authentic. And, and, and it's, um, and you look at, the, you compare it to Bob's one, there's a lot of similar, similar things, you know, yeah. a lot of, it, it's definitely Willis O'Brien. I mean, this is a classic Willis O'Brien um, spine. This is, this is how he did all his, all his spines. Like this kind of H blocks. Classic. And, yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and so this has came out of nowhere suddenly. And so, and, so, um, and so Bob was thrilled that I got it and, you know, we posed them together. Because there's a photograph of the two Kongs. There's one black and white photo of the two Kongs sort of standing. I think, they, I think they're posed with their arms around each other like that, their buddies. And so Bob and I posed our ones with oh, the same, the same, great. <laughs> the same um, poses, yeah. That is fabulous. What an, <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I, like I'm speechless at how beautiful these bits of machining are. These toes mm -hmm. are just so yeah. sensitive. Remarkable. Yeah. So this is what you'd save in the fire. This one, yeah. I think that's a totally. Well, I mean, thing. that's one handed. I probably the other hand I could do Mighty Joe Young as well. I could probably get him with my second hand <laughs> because Mighty Joe Young's uh, ni that's nineteen thirty three, and now Willis O'Brien. We're now we're in nineteen um, forty nine. So uh, we've we've got our you know the, our machining has gotten that little bit. Yeah, we have radiuses more and refined, things more and this is this is this is Joe's rib rib cage. No way. This is Joe's rib cage that would go oh, go there. So beautiful. Um, and um, yeah, you can sort of see how it's all just, you know, it's, it, now the machining has got, they were actually made, machined and made by Marcel Delgado, was his famous model, model maker. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, that was his, that was the guy that made um, Willis O'Brien's models for him. You know, something when you, when you move the head, it just feels like there's something, it's very like, yep. it's recognizable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's four Joe Youngs that survive, and we know where all, where all four are. So oh, they, good. So they are still, they still survived. These finger joints, and you can see yeah. the advances they've been making. I mean, actually, these are still impressively tight. Yes. For, yep. uh, what is it, 80 years? Yep. 85 years later? Yeah. You've got to get a close-up of this. Come here and look at this. It's this beautiful little tiny. I get tired just thinking about machining that. Willis O'Brien is also frustratingly famous for all the films he never made. Because he would develop all these amazing ideas, you know, drawing storyboards. Sometimes yeah. do little tests and um, never make them. And this was a uh, Willis O'Brien project called War Eagles, which was eagles that um, Amazon Amazon tribe in South America somewhere would ride on the back of the eagles. They were huge. Like these were like eagles with twenty five foot wingspans, and there were dinosaurs around. So the eagles would swoop down with these guys on their backs fighting tyrannosauruses. And he was going to shoot it in color. This was um, around. The forties. This was about. It was. This was around the Mighty Joe Young period, sort of, sort of mid, mid to late forties. Yeah. And he shot a test. Apparently, no, it doesn't survive. Some color photos survive. C color, um, um, still survive from from the footage. The footage doesn't doesn't survive, as far as anyone knows, of um, a test of the war eagles fighting a um, el elasaur. And um, so, the, for for years, this has been a, a, a mythic with uh, a Brian project. Bit of footage, but, but that you no know. One's but found. there is actually, you know, there's three. I've got I've, over Look the time. I've got three three surviving war, war eagle puppets. So um, these are, and obviously the wings the wings would yeah. be would be added. The wings have gone, but this is a Willis O'Brien armature. Marcel Delgado would have made. Oh, the wings are there, of course, because that's why, why stupid me. Arms are wings and wind birds, aren't they? So that's the wings, and um, this is the War Eagles. This is a Willis O'Brien project that never got made. Wonderful artwork, wonderful colour photos. Shot in, he was going to shoot it in colour, but he never got funded. No one wanted to fund him, and it never got made. It's but, a great um, character. Look at these. Yeah. They're very menacing. But even today, you get excited by you hear um, Amazon tribe riding on the back of giant yeah. eagles fighting dinosaurs. <laughs> totally it still, still gets you excited today. You know, it's like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These are great. Look at yeah. that. They've gone. Oh, they're, they're serious. They could do That's some damage. That's real, yeah. They should do some damage. Oh. <laughs>